hi everyone welcome to cloud sprint in this video we are going to start the series on compute options gcp compute is bread and butter for cloud engineers so it really makes sense to understand compute in detail because while working on gcp cloud you'll be working on managing compute scaling descaling most of your time will be you'll be spending with compute engine from the exam perspective also this is a really important topic in this video we will understand that what is gcp compute how to use it what options we have of compute major focus will be on compute engine let's go ahead and check it out first we need to understand what is how many gcp compute offerings we have the first one is compute engine which is general virtual machines which you also use on your on premises so it is kind of you can you can rent some vms over gcp by just few clicks second is gke which is managed google kubernetes engine you can just provision a GK cluster in a few clicks. Third option is App Engine, where you get the managed platform, which is platform as a service, which you get the managed platform where you can run your code directly. You can deploy new versions, you can scale, descale, shift traffic. You don't have to manage the platform basically, you just do the deployment. Fourth one is Cloud Run. Cloud Run is more like running your containers uh, on the platform provided by Google. You just have to deploy a container and it will find out the resources to run. Fifth is uh, Cloud Function, which is mainly used for event-based uh, architecture or when you need compute for some specific minute on-demand kind of architecture Cloud Function is used for. So these five options we have, the more left side options you choose, you'll have more control. The more right side you go, it will be managed. In the backbone, GCP compute engine will run, but for us, it, it becomes managed service. If you want control over your infrastructure, like what kind of VMC you want to give, how much memory you want to allocate, how much CPU you want to allocate, you should go ahead with compute engine because that's where you get the most control. In GK also, you can control how many type of nodes you want to give, what will be your uh, child nodes, how you want to run them, what are the things you want to install? You can definitely control that. Coming to App Engine, again, it's a platform. Uh, Cloud Run is a platform. Cloud Function is mostly a platform. So you don't control what you want to install, but you can just deploy and leverage the benefit. You cannot control the environment, but in these two cases, you can control the environment. That's the difference. This video is all about Compute Engine. I'll be covering all these five compute options because uh, all these five topics are really important for exam and I'll be covering all the topics required for the exam. While covering it, I'll also be covering that when to choose what, in which situation you'll be going ahead with compute, in which situation you'll be going ahead with app engine, when to use cloud function. This is what a cloud engineer's job is mainly to find the right candidate for the nature of the workload. If you want to run a container, a simple container you may go ahead with cloud run you want to manage all the resources allocated with uh, that and you also want to orchestrate those uh, those containers you might want to go ahead with gk i'll be covering these kind of uh, examples use cases so you get to know it so uh, today let's focus on compute engine google compute engine gce is an infrastructure as a service offering that allows clients to run workload on google's physical infrastructure google is already running google search engine gmail youtube and other services using gce it enables users to launch virtual machines on demand depending on your need how much memory how much cpu you can just allocate create it on demand and use it for your daily purpose this is an option which allows you to run something on google's uh, physical infrastructure directly sitting at your desktop and you will be paying for the uh, time you are running it if you're running it for one hour you pay for one hour if you run it for 24 hours you pay for 24 hours google also offers some generous discounts if you are using it on a regular basis the first and foremost thing after starting Compute Engine is to understand what is the reason and the zones. All the blue one you see are reasons and there are data centers within those reasons are called zones. Okay, the blue ones are have three plus three plus uh, data centers which is called zones. So you while designing your application, you just need to ensure that you are provisioning resources within your uh, reason rather than uh, anything else. For, For example, example, if you have customers from Delhi and you provision your VMs in uh, Toronto, you'll have a lag, okay? You'll have latency, your user experience will vanish. So it always makes sense to, while provisioning your infrastructure, always be much more closer to your customers for better experience. Mm -hmm. A general thinking is to go ahead with a 
the cheapest option okay but that's not always how it works because if you choose the cheapest option suppose your central one is the cheapest option for now and your customers are in tokyo you'll be paying much more on network throughput for a very bad ex customer experience so as a cloud engineer it's your job is to find the best optimal solution which serves the cost latency and better user experience so while designing the system you make sure most of your clients are from which location and you provision your resources in those locations so they don't face the latency so if your customers are from india and you provision your servers in us for the cheaper option you'll be paying more for network traffic it definitely makes sense to provision your infrastructure in india if you have from both the reasons you should have your uh, resources in both the reasons and then you can balance using a load balancer balance the traffic along okay so this map really helps you to understand which is the my nearest location and uh, how to choose it let's understand the options we have in this example asia is one is uh, one of the reason okay and it has three zones so you can have one cluster in each zone and then serve your customers very well so better customer experience across asia that's how you can control your reason and zone customers and if even a zone goes out you can serve your customers from different zones that is how it is segregated to simplify it for you the reasons are collection of zones zones have high bandwidth low latency network and other zones in the same reason in order to deploy fault tolerant application high availability google recommends deploying men applications across multiple zone and multiple regions a zone is deployment area within that region which can also be known as the data center it's a fully qualified name such as us central 1a so region is us central 1 us central 1a 1b 1c is your zones okay let's go ahead and understand how to use compute any compute is created inside a gcp project so in this case i want to create compute inside inside data science dev I'll click on compute engine once you click on compute engine you will see it's asking you to enable the api because by default this api is not enabled what will happen once you click on enable let me show you that if you come to vpc you'll see there is no vpc network okay when you come to im there is no compute service account okay system manager so once you click on uh, enable api in the background what it is doing it is creating a vpc it is creating a subnet in all the regions so i can easily go ahead and uh, create a compute it is also creating service account providing permission so basically in a nutshell it is doing everything needed for me to use compute engine api and always remember very important point the first thing you need to do for using compute engine is enable the api anything comes later so this is the first step to do it so we have clicked on enabled let's see what it does perfect so it enabled the compute engine api now let's go ahead and check these two locations which i just asked you to verify you can see it has created a default service account a random name number compute and service account okay compute engine default service account role is editor then it also created a google service uh, api service agent and role is given editor while working in production of course we don't use these uh, service accounts we will cover that later but for learning purpose these are good to go now let's go ahead and check at the network level what all it has done for, for me over the network okay now you can see there is a network called default network okay inside this default network it has created all subnets for me okay in, in all the reasons that's how create while learning i can create all the compute i don't face any problem that's how it's called enabling the uh, compute engine api let's go ahead and try to create a vm this is how a uh, ui looks like you can just again uh, choose what you want to see what you don't want to see you can remove it from here okay okay the this ui will change you can create instance from here you can start stop delete you can uh, check metrics from here you can show info panel if you want to see some more information now let's try to create instance for creating an instance for a vm i need to create 
click on create instance once you open it you will be asked that what do you want to do you want to create a vm you want to create it from template or machine image or directly from marketplace we already have covered marketplace in one of the video you can use this also for now i'm just interested in new vm so the first thing it is asking me to provide a name name i'll say cloud sprint dash vm okay now i have to choose the most important thing which is reason and zone okay always remember these things are permanent you're not gonna change once you create in this reason now suppose my customers are mostly in uh, asia okay and i want them to be served from delhi now this reason has three zones okay? so I'll, I'll choose that okay this zone this particular zone i want to use because this i feel it's the nearest okay that's how you choose your reason and zone once you choose your reason and zone the second important decision you have to make is choosing the machine configuration. You want to use it for general purpose. You want it for compute optimized, memory optimized, or the GPUs. We will go ahead and create this N1 standard one, which is probably the lowest one. I'll choose N1 standard one. Okay. Once you have made decision on reason, zone, your machine type. Okay. You confidentially you know i don't want to deploy any container for now boot disk is good okay which image you want to use this is the third thing you need to uh, ensure all options you have you can choose from debian centos okay if you want to use windows you can choose windows over here okay that's that's the thing which you need to choose but for now we will just go ahead with debian and we'll say that okay the version 10 is good for us any boot disk yes i want to, to take the boot disk select now the fourth part is once you've done with uh, image and the boot disk or you've chosen the operating system the fourth decision you need to make is identity and api access you remember i shown you in the i am that uh, it has created well, once you initialize the api it has created one default service account so this is the one service account uh, by default it is using if you don't change it it will be using by default one okay for now we just gonna keep it allow uh, default access or firewall rule advanced option let's check you can also change the network tags network but i'm not changing anything i'm just keeping it default which is default default talking about disk i'm not adding any disk i'm not changing anything in the management also i'm not giving any startup script okay so uh after these four decisions i will review that how much money i'm shilling out with this so uh for for this particular uh, configuration i need to pay 30 dollar per month so this is a monthly estimate so for this particular vm i have to pay 30 dollars per month running 24 7 it will also give me a generous discount of 12 dollars uh, once i'm done with all these steps i'll click on create once you click on create it will start creating the vm and within a few minutes this vm will be available for us to use yes the vm is available okay the name which you have given is cloud sprint.vm the zone is here the creation date is here machine type and if you want to see something more uh if you want me to remove something you can do that here also okay network tags and all okay that's that's how your vm is created but uh, there are many ways to connect it i can directly click on ssh or i can do it via cloud shell session or i can connect it via downloading the credential or authenticating myself for now let's click directly on ssh and try to log in once you click on this uh, vm it will, it will be transfer your ssh keys to the vm which will enable the session for you and you can directly log in through iap now it is asking my permission to enable iap tcp connection i'll say okay authorize now it will ask me for details like my username and password to ensure that i am the one who is trying to uh you know i'll click on next 
okay e cloud data see the email address okay i'll allow that as well i click on continue perfect so here is my vm once i close it again click on ssh this time it should be pretty straightforward because it has it already have my connection established and uh, yes that's how you create a vm you can just go ahead and check your uh, your operating system okay the name of it. that's how you create a vm if you want to see that what it it did when you when you when you clicked on ssh for that you need to click here and uh, just come down you can see all the properties here okay you can also go ahead and see that what is the boost boot disk storage local disk so whatever you had allocated while creating it also the ssh key the ssh key is already uh, added here which which would be just transferred by authorizing yourself okay that's what it is now if you want to delete it okay this these are the options here you can stop it stop is means you are just stopping it for now once you start the vm it will again start from there itself yes you can see the instance is stopped once the instance is stopped you are not paying for that particular hours whenever it is stopped you only pay a nominal fee for disk and all otherwise you don't pay for the resources if you want to start it you can again click on start it will start the vm again and it will run all the startup script and all if needed yes you can see your instances started now you can again connect so the third thing you would want to delete it how to delete it just select the vm click on the options click on delete okay this will also delete the boot disk i'll click on okay confirm delete and within seconds this vm will also go away perfect so you can see instance is deleted now so that's how you create it you start stop delete suspend that's how you play with vm from the next videos we are going to do all the use cases around that how to use what when to use what how do you create custom machines so subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video so hit the like button subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video